Hello and welcome to another Every Tuesday tutorial. In this week's tutorial, we are going to be creating some watercolor typography in Illustrator. Now, if you are more comfortable working in Photoshop, I already have a tutorial on creating watercolor typography in Photoshop, so I'll leave that link on screen. But for the purposes of this tutorial, we're gonna be hanging out in Illustrator the entire time, and I'm going to walk you through three different methods for applying watercolor textures to typography. So all the watercolor textures that are going to be used in this tutorial are coming from my watercolor texture kit volume three. It's packed with 32 unique multicolored textures that vary in texture and color. So there's a lot of variety there. And then there's also 12 seamless watercolor patterns and then two watercolor paper texture patterns that are included in the kit. So that's what we're going to be using in this tutorial. And as a bonus this week, I'm giving one of those textures away for free. So you can follow along and do everything that we're doing right here um, using that texture. So definitely hit the link in the video description and I will leave a link on screen for where you can pick up that free texture. Okay, so we are back in Illustrator. And one thing you need to remember when you first get started is you need to look at your watercolor text it's really important that it's sized properly for the type of application that you'd like to use it on because if it's not resed up enough then you're gonna get some really blurry textures and it's not gonna look as crisp and as beautiful as you would like it to be so all of my textures are at least 2,000 pixels long so that allows for um, fitting in with all common types of applications. If you'd like to create your own watercolor textures or your own digital watercolor textures, I have an entire class on my process of creating them, editing them, digitizing them, and even cutting out their backgrounds so you can place them on any color you'd like. So I'll leave a link on screen for that too if you wanna learn more about creating your own textures. Okay, so we're just gonna hop right in and like I said, we're gonna go over three different methods that you can use. So mix and match, use whatever works best for you. Okay, so as you can see right here, this is the final outcome of this tutorial. So we're just gonna be putting some beautiful textures in some pretty type. So the font that I'm using right here is my own font called Tuesday Script, and I'll leave a link to that if you're interested in checking it out. So we're gonna start over here and we're gonna work our way all the way over to putting watercolor textures in not only typography, but extra shapes as well, which is really nice if you wanna create some watercolor logos. Okay. So coming over here first, as you can see, when I click on this, these were all typed together. They're not separate pieces. Like if I look at this, these are separate pieces of text. These were typed all together. So that's really important. This is method number one, and it applies whenever you have a single word or a letter or lines of text that were created as one together. Okay, so what we're gonna do is go file, place, and we are going to choose a texture. These are some of the textures in the kit. So what I'm looking for is a texture with a lot of different color variety. So we can really take advantage of all the multicolor that you get um, when using a texture. This one looks pretty good and this one looks really good too. So I'm gonna grab, I'm gonna grab this one which is number 12 from the kit and hit place. And I'm just gonna scale it up enough so it covers all of the words. And this was brought in smaller than it was actually created at, so I'm not disrupting resolution at all right here. Okay, so the next thing we need to do once we have our watercolor texture in Illustrator is sending it behind the text that we want to lock it inside of. So all you need to do is right click, choose arrange, send it back, or you can use the keyboard shortcut, command shift, open bracket, and that will send it to the back. Okay, so the next thing you need to do is just rubber band select everything, right click and choose make clipping mask, and just like that, we're done. And our text is still editable, so we can add to it if we'd like, and it will also take on the watercolor qualities that we have in place. So that's a handy little trick to very quickly adding watercolor textures to topography. Okay, so scenario number two. If you have two pieces of text, maybe they're different scales, different fonts, for whatever reason, they're separate. Okay, we did not type these at the same time. They're separate pieces. So in order to create watercolor typography here, there are two ways you can do it. So I'm gonna show you the first way first, which is the easiest way, and then I'll show you a little bit more of a complex way second. Okay, so this first way 
is by using a pattern swatch, which if you caught the tutorial last week, you already know how to do it. Um, so we're kind of piggybacking off of last week for this, but it's very simple to do. So the first thing you need to do is figure out how you want your typography to line up and then you're gonna group them together. So select them both and hit Command G or Control G on a PC to group them together. Next, you're gonna come over to your swatches palette. And if you don't have any watercolor swatches here, make sure you check out the tutorial from last week and you'll know exactly how to get them in there. And to get to your swatches palette, all you have to do is go Window Swatches and it'll be brought up. And then you just click on the texture that you wanna to use in it and it treats it as if it was one piece of text, which you can see if I zoom in here, the texture continues between the two words, so it feels like it was locked into them as if they were one word instead of two words. So that's really important. And if you wanna change the scale like we did last week, all you have to do is right click, transform, choose scale, make sure that transform objects is unchecked. Then you can come up here and if I wanna go 25%, and then I can just click on the preview and now I've got more variety in that texture and it looks a lot prettier like this. And I could even test out 50% if I want to and just uncheck and check preview and then you'll see what it looks like. So that's method number two. The other really cool thing about this method is I can still add on the text and it's gonna take on that pattern texture exactly as I need it. Okay, so the next method, if you don't have any pattern swatches, this is the method for you. So what we're gonna do is if I just bring in a watercolor texture right now, file place, and I'm just gonna grab, let's grab number 20. And if I just put it in here and follow all the steps that we did for the first method, let me make sure I'm covering all of my text here. Send it to the back and then highlight everything, right click, make clipping mask. It doesn't know where to go. See, I'm missing a word already and that's not right. I want both of those words to have it, but because they're two separate pieces, Illustrator says, well, I need to choose one of them and it decided to choose the last one that was typed. So we don't want this to happen. So let me backtrack a little bit. Okay, so in order for this to work, if you don't have a pattern swatch and you wanna lock it in just like this, there are a couple of different things you can do. First, I would make a copy of this because this method requires us to create shapes out of our text, so it will no longer be editable once we complete this method. So what I always suggest is you either save a raw version of your file or just create a copy of what you're using and set it aside. That way, if you ever change your mind later and you need to edit your text, you've got a copy that you can do that with. Because once we do this, you can no longer edit your text. Okay, so the next thing we wanna do is just select both pieces of our text. We're gonna create outlines. So we're gonna go type, create outlines, and this will convert them into shapes, which if I zoom in here, you can tell they're all separate little pieces of shapes. And the next thing we need to do is combine them all so we don't have all these little straggly little pieces. So we're just gonna come into our Pathfinder palette right here. If you don't see your Pathfinder palette, you can get to it by going Window Pathfinder and it'll pop open. And then just hit this icon right here for Unite. And this will unite all of those little pieces together. So we have a full piece of text. Next, we need to create a compound path. And what a compound path does, first of all, you can only apply it to shapes, which is why we needed to create shapes out of our typography. A compound path tells Illustrator, look, there's two different pieces of artwork right here, but whenever I'm masking or using textures within them, I want you to consider them one object instead of two objects. Even if we just group them together, that's not enough. Illustrator still recognizes them as two separate pieces. When you create a compound path, it tells Illustrator, always consider this one piece of artwork instead of two separate pieces of artwork. So with both of them selected, you're gonna hit Command-8 or Control-8 on a PC, or you can go Object, Compound Path, Make. And once you do that, now if we go back and select everything, right click, make clipping mask, yes, right here. And now we've got our texture locked into our typography and it's looking great. And a really cool thing that you get to have with this method, even though you can't edit your typography anymore, if you hit A on your keyboard and grab your direct select tool, you can click inside any one of the letters and now just click and drag and you can move this texture around so you can find the best kind of look for it. And you can even, if you hit V, 
Now you can grab the corners, hold shift, and you can rescale that texture. Hit A again, click inside and move, and you can really have a lot of uh, flexibility with the texture once it's masked within shapes instead of live typography. So that's a really handy way to take advantage of this method. Okay, so this last example was just a recap of everything we went over just to reiterate what we've done and that way uh, everything is fresh in your mind and you're ready to go. So for this example, I've got shapes and I've got regular text. So we're going to walk through the method of creating a compound path one more time. And since these are already shapes, we're going to lock a different texture into these ones. So we're going to create watercolor typography with a texture inside of just the type and then a texture inside of just the objects. So let's do the type first since that one's a little more complex. So we're gonna select both of these even though they're two separate pieces right now. So I'm gonna select both of them. I'm gonna go type, create outlines. Then I'm gonna come over to my Pathfinder, hit Unite. And then I'm gonna hit Command-8 or Control-8 on a PC to make a compound path. Now I'm gonna go File, Place, and choose my texture, which I'm gonna choose number 14. Hit Place. Scale it up so it covers all of my type. Send it to the back. Select the type and the texture. Right click, make clipping mask. Hit yes. And now we're good to go with our type. Okay, next thing is we're gonna lock a texture inside of both of these, but since once again, these are two separate elements, we need to create a compound path, but since it's not live text and we already have shapes, we can skip right to the compound path part. So I'm gonna select both of these, hold shift, click on your other one to select just your objects, command eight or control eight to create a compound path, file place. We're gonna bring in a new texture this time. We're gonna use texture number eight, which is the free texture that I'm giving away this week. I'm gonna enlarge it to cover both of my shapes, send it to the back, select my objects and the texture, right click, make clipping mask, hit yes. And now we've got our beautiful texture inside of our shapes and typography. So that's a nice way to use textures, a variety of textures inside of different objects, not just typography. So that's how to create watercolor typography in Illustrator. If you enjoy this tutorial, please subscribe. I release a new design tutorial every single Tuesday. And don't forget to head on over to my blog, every-tuesday.com for even more design tutorials and a bunch of design freebies. And I will leave a link to every single thing mentioned in this video, the textures, the class on creating your own watercolor textures, as well as the font. So be sure to check that out. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next week.